All right, welcome to my introduction to Blockhead. This is a video I've been meaning to record for quite a while now, so I'm glad to get to it. Um, the Blockhead is a DAW that I discovered around the start of October that uh, immediately grabbed me. And so I got it and played around with it and I really, really liked it. So I ended up writing a 200 page manual for it. Um, I would, if what you see in this video interests you at all, I would highly recommend getting it yourself. I'll put links to Kalugo's uh, Patreon and channel in the description, who's the creator of Blockhead. Um, but I think it's like $3 a month on Patreon it's very affordable and you get to use and support the development of this really cool piece of software so um, the core of blockhead consists of blocks which are these things that are put onto lanes which are these in a track so tracks work pretty much the same as how tracks work in like any DAW. Um, but blocks and lanes are pretty unique to Blockhead. Uh, some blocks like sampler blocks and synth blocks are kind of comparable to like, um, you know, items in Reaper or something like that. But blocks go far beyond that as well so um something to kind of get accustomed to that i find is harder to explain than it is to understand or get used to uh but uh, is that audio within a track flows downward through the lanes in that track so for example um Got this sample block here so I can add an effect I add a saturator here so you can see before the saturator block there's nothing below the sampler block there this this block is here just for looping um, nothing affecting the audio from the sampler block. But then once it crosses over into the saturator block, the audio is coming down through, uh, down from this sampler block into the saturator block. So it's being affected by it for the length of that sat saturator block. And then once it's, it's over, then it's just back to the clean signal. So it's, uh, it's very easy to work with it's very, very intuitive. That's one of the greatest strengths of Blockhead, I think, is that largely it's just very intuitive and smooth to work with. Need to keep an eye on, I'm boiling some water to make ravioli. Um, but uh, so yeah, that's, that's basically how the audio flow works. It's downwards through the lanes of a track and then out of that track and tracks are pretty much disconnected from each other um i think the only way to connect between tracks is with a send and receive which i'll probably get to later um so i guess i'll talk about samplers. So there, there are three main block types, which are samplers, synths, and effects. There are a bunch of other block types, like this meta block here, but those three are the, the main three. And you can switch between each of them just by clicking this thing up here. So like on this effect block, you can click here and can just swap it over to whatever other effect I want. But right now I'm just in the classic sampler here just disable this saturator um, which is just a 
pretty normal sampler. It, the pitch shifting is rate shifting. Like that. Um, yeah, pretty standard. But you can switch to fudge, which is like a, a granular sampler. Um, you know, with pitch shifting and time stretching and all this. Um, you can control the grain size, of course. Lots of cool stuff to do with that. Uh, it also has this harmonic section, which appears to not be working in this current version of Blockhead. I'll just pull up. Um, the previous version. Um, it's just my alarm for lunch. So this is the previous version of Blockhead. So if we, oops, switch this to fudge, just time stretch it. Oh, I need to also set this. Whoa. Oh, you can't hear that. Uh, there we go. There we go. Um, so yeah, just gonna time stretch it a bunch. So you can use these harmonics, this harmonic section to, the way it works is is pretty complex. Um, I, I explain in it, explain it much more thoroughly here um, this whole section is about how the harmonics work, but, um, oh, my water's boiling, one sec. So the way it works is fairly complex, but it creates these harmonics relative to the um, the like base grain, the, the base granular resynthesis layer creates harmonics relative to that. and you can tune them differently. And then there's spread, which does all sorts of crazy stuff. I actually, uh, this section is describing exactly how all the different spread values affect things. It's, it's pretty complex, but... Um, It has weird, crazy harmonic stuff, which is like, I've never seen a, a granular synthesizer that does something like that. It's really unusual, really cool. You just get really weird, unique results from it. That's That just kind of is how Blockhead is, generally speaking. You just get weird, unique, interesting results from just about everything here. Uh, it's... I don't know, it's like nothing, prepare for your expectations to be, uh, I don't know, flipped on their head. 
just about everywhere. Like everything is, is very unique. Um, but uh, let's see. So that's the samplers. Oh yeah, I guess I'll, I'll, so I've already been doing it here, but this is how the automation works. Uh, this is the thing that drew me most to Blockhead initially um, is that it allows for really fast, complex, and easy to set up automation of things. So this is all you do to create automation. You just click to place points and then you can zoom in when it like highlights one of these bars you can do this to create a slope and you can just really quickly get these really complex automation curves <clears throat> and then you can just do that for all of these different parameters um, something I won't get into too deep here, but, uh, you can see as every time I change something here, tasks pop up over here and it changes this waveform display. So it is constantly baking everything you do. So when you play it back, it's not doing all this processing in real time. It's actually processing it ahead of time and then when you play it it's just playing it back which allows you to do some really strange and unique automations on things that you wouldn't or at least would have difficulty doing um in in other DAWs I mean for example like I don't think you can usually have this much complex control and automation over time stretching um, so yeah, you can do really cool stuff. Um, oh, and there's also manipulators, which are sort of like global automation. So you can set a parameter and you can see it, it has here like every parameter that exists in blockhead. And for some of them, it'll, it'll say like what what plugins use them. One sec. Um, so you can, you can pick a parameter for example, let me, let me get, um, freeze for example. So both fudge and freeze have a pitch parameter. So what I can do is you can see intersecting, uh, parameters and I can see pitch. So now when I create automation here, it is affecting both the uh, the automation the pitch automation on fudge and on freeze um, and so you can you can have it override it so basically the automation you create here directly is the automation curves for that parameter in uh, any relevant blocks 
or you can set it to offset. So basically those curves will still be applied, but this is going to then offset those curves. Um, you can do some scope stuff where like you can have it, uh, you can have it affect all tracks. So you could have this affect relevant blocks across tracks. Uh, you can have it affect parent blocks, which is relevant for macros, which uh, I might get to later. Um, and you can have it just like only affect a certain block type, only affect a certain block. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, it's pretty cool. I, I particularly like it for using it with this plugin actually freeze because so what freeze does is it kind of uh, just grabs the first grain and then uh, just loops that for the length of the uh, let me try to uh, loops it for the length of the block so the thing I like doing with freeze is slicing it a bunch so that then you get each one of these individual blocks of freeze will grab its own little green get cool stuff but once you've done that like you're not gonna control each one of these pitches individually, like it's just gonna be too time consuming. So you can use a, a manipulator to control, you know, I can set it so that, um, uh, any instance of this plugin, there we go. So that should be affecting only the freeze plugin. So it's not affecting the fudge plugin anymore, but it's controlling the pitches of these individual freeze blocks without needing to automate each of them individually, which is really, really helpful. Um, now, I guess I will talk about the synths. Um, let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna be right back. I wish there was a way to pause this. But I don't think there is. I'll be right back.
All right. I've been I've been trying to record this video for like two hours now, so I meant to have this done a while ago, <coughs> but it ended up happening uh, around my lunchtime. So I will get into the synth blocks now. So Blockhead has two synth blocks. <coughs> it has Burke um, and it has Test Synth. So I'll get into Test Synth first because it's, while not, it still has its own uh, complexities, but overall it's a, a lot more simple to go through than Burke. Um, so Test Synth is, for the most part, a fairly standard two operator FM synth. So you have your carrier with a waveform that goes between uh, sine, triangle, square, and saw, and its own pitch, which uh, I think is C3. It's either C3 or C4. Uh, that all got messed up because I didn't realize until late in the process that Ableton, for some reason, considers C3 to actually be C4. Like, the world's C4 is Ableton's C3 for some reason. Um, so, I had been using Ableton for tuning and stuff like that, just testing a lot of stuff in, uh, in Blockhead. So... Some things say C3, some things say C4. I'm not sure which is which, but it's either C3 or C4. Um, then you have an FM amount, which you might notice sounds a little different than uh, FM synths usually do. I got stuck on this for a while before realizing that um, this is exponential FM, not linear FM, which I'm still amazed that I had never heard the distinction between those two, bef re like referenced before. Um, <clears throat> so basically, in, in case you didn't know, as I didn't, uh, exponential FM is when the, the modulating frequency is modulating it in terms of um, like semitones or octaves rather than modulating it by a certain number of hertz. So when you modulate it by a certain number of hertz, you get a normal FM sound, you know, the FM sound that basically everything is going to sound like. Um, whereas with exponential FM, because like if you're going up and down by an octave, when you're going, if, if the carrier frequency is 400 hertz, and you're going up and down by an octave, the octave above is 800 hertz, the octave below is 200 hertz. So you're going up by 400 and down by 200. So basically, you get a much different sound. Just a pretty crazy sound overall. Um, that, I don't know, I think it's, it's probably really good for uh, some interesting sound design. I haven't played around with it a ton myself yet, but you get some cool sounds. So then the modulator, this is also C3 or C4, I don't remember. So yeah, that's, I don't know, pretty standard, just kind of controlling the uh, modulator's pitch. But then you can also have this modulator FM amount, 
which when I first saw it, I was kind of wondering like, okay, so what's, what is the modulator here? Cause there's no other, there isn't like a modulator to pitch control or anything like that. So I spent a while testing this. And it sounds pretty wild. It also cuts out randomly. I'm not really sure why that is. I think it, it's I think it's just how this FM works, it sometimes cuts out like this, but I spent quite a while trying to figure out what it was doing here until Kalugo thankfully explained to me that it is cross modulation. So the modulator is FMing, or the, the carrier is FMing the modulator. And since the modulator is also FMing the carrier, it creates this pretty crazy, noisy, erratic sound. You also have um, on both the synth blocks and sampler blocks this noise section um, which can either be in multiply or mix mode. In multiply mode I think it um, it essentially AMs noise with the signal. It's kind of hard to hear here because the signal itself is already kind of noisy, but um, and then in mix mode, it's just kind of a mix between the signal and noise. Uh, but in in multiply mode, you can um, we get this break here again. Um, I I like using the multiply mode at a at a low value. Just kind of gives some grit to the sound. It's pretty cool. But um, so that's pretty much the test synth. Now Burke is. A lot stranger. So let me um, pull up Pink Trombone in case you haven't seen this before. There is a, it is a uh, voice synthesis thing that is just really funny, I, I think. Uh oh, I broke it. I think it's just kind of funny. Um, but that is in part, or that, or the, the, I don't know, the system behind Pink Trombone is at least partially what Burke is based on. So it is a voice synthesis thing. A voice synthesis synth. Um... Really? <laughs> 
You get these weird vocal warbly just sort of funny sounds out of it. It I still don't really know how it works. Um in the manual I just kind of did my best to speculate about how it works. Um but uh you can get some some cool weird sounds from it. Um You can uh, you can close the throat here, and you can get some weird, some cool like guttural clicks out of opening and closing the throat quickly. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a very cool and unique synth. That it's another another example of a thing where it's like I've never seen a DAW just come with something like this. It's it's so wild. Um, similarly with the test synth as well. Like by all accounts, this this is like a, a very standard synth, <clears throat> but it still has this weirdness with um, exponential. FM and cross modulation. So it's, yeah, just subverting expectations at, at every point, I think. Even things you think are going to be very simple have all these weird in intricacies and lots of cool room to explore. Um, so I guess I'll get into the effects now. I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, there's a lot of them are you know, fairly standard like rattler it's a delay um, freeze I, I showed earlier it's that sort of granular it grabs a grain and then just loops it uh, lo-fi oh is a like bit crusher sample rate reducer you, you can see just you just get really cool weird effects from from playing around in here that's it is a a cool environment to play around in. Um, ring mod, it's a ring mod, saturator, saturator, wave bender. This is a very strange one. Another pretty complex and unique thing. One sec. So this, and I'm not gonna, I'm actually gonna pull up the manual here because I don't remember exactly, exactly how this works. Um, but I seem to remember, so it, I think it looks for zero crossings in the incoming audio and then it sort of, it's a bit like granular resynthesis. But rather than the grains being determined by an amount of time, they are determined dynamically by sort of a combination of a bunch of different factors. Like the frequency is, is a main contributing factor in how big the, the bubble, I think, as the um, or wavelet. Maybe bubbles just like the the size. I don't remember. Um, wavelet might be the the term used. Um, but uh, it 
it counts how many zero crossings, like how many times the uh, the incoming signal crosses the, the zero crossing, the center of the waveform, and it slices those, once it counts up enough, slices those into these bubbles or wavelets or whatever they're called, and then it loops them and, and blends between them, and you just get really, really unique, strange results from it. Uh, actually, I'll put it on the this break. alarm um, so you can see it it is kind of like a granular synth or resynthesis um, but it'll it has wild effects on things and it, it can sound drastically it, it can sound like a completely different effect just with slight changes um, I believe smoother it like applies a low pass filter to the signal before counting those zero crossings so because if you have less high frequencies it's going to cross it, the the center line less frequently so it'll the bubbles will be larger it's a, a complex effect that is described pretty thoroughly here um that just creates incredible unique effects that I like are unlike anything I've heard in any other plugin I think so really cool um, let's see what else um, compressor compressor is actually working properly now in this current version it had strange problems for a while where it made the incoming audio very loud but it's actually um it's actually working well now let me put this in oh, i should bring this down I don't know why. I think I'm still hearing wave bender, even though it should be muted. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure. Let me just pull up a new one. It, you know, granted, this is in alpha. Uh, there is always going to be some weirdness with things. Um, but. what I'm hearing there in the left channel. Maybe that's just in it? I've, I guess I've just never noticed that before. I don't know. But yeah, the, the compressor is really nice now. Um, I really like it on, on these brakes. You get some really nice, like, snappy results. Um, what else? 
Uh, okay, so yeah, these are just you know three standard filters. We also have tracked. So tracked is the filter section from Burke. <clears throat> so kind of the thing that makes Burke unique from tracked is well, one, it's a synthesizer, but that <laughs> that's sort of defined by this voice section. This is what creates the sound. And then the throat and tongue sections are, um, I think, virtually the same as um, tracked, if not exactly the same. But basically, it lets you put whatever you want through those filters rather than just the, the voice oscillator here. This also has the fricatives um, control, but I won't bother getting into that. Um, but you can give it these kind of kind of formanty kind of formanty sounds with this tracked filter. Um, it also has this quality parameter, which I believe controls like the sample rate at which tracked functions. Burke has the same thing, um, but it can also kind of give some cool formity. And I, I think it sounds sort of like the, um, I forget what they're called. Those tubes that you turn up, up and down that make a sound. Cool, cool thing. It's like this is another thing where what what DAW is coming with this sort of vocal synthesis filter thing. It's it's very unique. Um, then there is Zap, which is quite a bit like Disperser. Use disperser at all. Um, the way it's another thing where the way it works is fairly complex. Um, I won't get too deep into it here, but it did um, it did force me to learn more about phase and the weird stuff you can do with manipulating phase. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a good learning opportunity. Uh, but yeah, it, without getting too deep into how it works, it makes the incoming sounds, particularly like transient rich sounds into kind of plucky sounds. Kind of like makes everything into a kick a little bit. Um, then I have a spring reverb. And a resonator. Oh, which this is another thing. Actually, I'm going to be curious to see if the um, harmonics work on this or not. Yep, the harmonics work on, on the resonator. Um, so at first blush, it's a fairly normal resonator. So I'm going to put it above the reverb. Uh, actually, no. I'll just disable the reverb. Um, however, it also has FM. Have you ever seen a resonator, a resonator with FM? 
Because I haven't. Like, it's, it's just another instance of, like, this... It's so unique and pushes so many boundaries that even even in this alpha state it it does things and and goes places that I've never seen other DAWs or plugins do. Um which is really cool. So you can get some really cool sounds with this. Let's change the, the ratio. Um, and then, of course, it also has harmonics. Just really cool stuff. Um, oh yes, uh, so this is something I didn't mention earlier. Uh, so you press space to start and stop, but most of the time you'll just be using tab because that moves the playhead to wherever the cursor is and then plays it. And you can hold tab to re-trigger that. You can see the re-trigger rate of the cursor. So you can get this cool sort of granular scrubbing. Cool stuff. Um, but then you can you can sort of reuse those sounds uh, by using stuff from the loopback. So as you're working and playing stuff in Blockhead, it is recording what it's outputting. So you can see here, this is what I was just playing. So then, oops, so I can just, if I wanted this, select that, grab it, and now I have that imported into the project. You can see here, as I'm playing it, it's recording it into this, into this buffer, and I'll just keep like looping over itself and recording. Uh, you can also set, you can add more input buffers for like mics and stuff like that. Um, But uh, yeah, it's really cool that you can, I mean, play around with it in this way and then use what you were playing around with in, in the project again. Um, it's sort of like Bird Bird's uh, global sampler for Reaper, um, but it's like that just built into the core of the DAW, which is really cool. Um, let's see, so there's also gainer, but that's, that's just applies gain and pan. Um, so, mm, I'm not sure what else I, I want to get into here. So you can make, me uh, macros are sort of like sub workspaces uh they're they're a lot like sub projects in reaper um so if i let's say i really like this section actually let me just collapse these down 
I'm, I'm too accustomed to um, Reaper controls now. I love being able to control scroll to shrink all the lanes or tracks. Gee, you, I mean, you might be able to do here in some way. I don't remember though. Um, but if I like this little thing I made. So if I like this little thing I made, I can select them and then I can drag it down here or I can just press H or no, K, sorry. And it will make a macro, which is this thing. So if we go back out here. So it is effectively the same thing as this but just in a single block. But we can open up that block, and now we have all of these same blocks in here. So we can change them around or whatever. Um, can add more tracks, more lanes, more sounds, more effects, whatever. Um, you can also use it for parallel processing. So you can like send audio into a macro and then set the input tracks. So you can put different effects on the tracks and have the incoming audio be sent to each of those. So like you could have it, could have the same audio be affected by a reverb and a saturator, but not a saturator and reverb on the same sound, if that makes sense. It's just parallel processing. Um, so that's a, a whole, cool rabbit hole um kalugo is working on making recursive macros so this is a whole other thing i haven't really gotten into but when you import things it puts them in this samples um the samples tab here and then this blocks tab has all of the blocks that exist in the project so if i wanted to make a copy of you can see it kind of highlights them here. If I wanted to make a copy of that block, I could just drag it in. No, I have a copy of that block. And you can see here at the top, it tells you how many instances of a given block exist in the project. Um, so when you change, this is a clone of a block. So when I change this, it will change it everywhere else. So see, I pitched that down a ton. This is also pitched down a ton now. But if I don't want it to do that, I can just, um, uh, where is it? Hmm. Oh yeah, here we go. Make unique. So now when I change the pitch on it, it's not going to change it anywhere else. So you can do that also just by copying. If you copy something, they'll they'll be disconnected. But if you clone it or drag it in from this blocks tab, um, affecting one will affect them all. Um, so yes, uh, getting back to this, Kalugo is working on having recursive macros. I think it might even be possible to some degree in this version, but I haven't played around with it yet. Um, because this macro is a block. You can see here somewhere. Oh, where was it? There it is, macro block. So theoretically, now we'll see if this is gonna crash it or not. No. It's, it's taking a little while to figure it out, but. Um, so basically now, if I open up this macro, oh, is it set now? Uh, can I, I'm not sure. I haven't played around with this yet at all. Um, you can see that. So 
this shows you what workspace you're in. Um, and when you open up a macro in a workspace, it, it leaves this breadcrumb trail that um, sort of navigates through the, um, the macros and workspaces like this. Um, yeah, maybe I can't, I'm not sure. It might be that you can't go into it, uh, it like into a second level with it, but I believe the current state with this is, <laughs> seeing that it didn't crash, um, is that I think it sort of figures this out to a certain level. So, you know, if I open, if I could open this one up, it would have the same thing, which me, would mean like you could theoretically just keep going an infinite number of levels, which it's, is impossible. So like it would just be computing this forever. So what it does instead is, I, I think it just figures it out to a certain level. So it goes like five levels deep or something like that. And I think Kalugo is making it so you can like define how many levels deep you want it to go. But just another cool, weird thing that no other DAW does. Um, then let's see. Oh, so yeah, we have a tempo guide here, which is just, um, basically a grid for setting things to a given tempo because there is no global tempo control in, in Blockhead. Um, then there's a start block, which I'm still... Uh, the way to start from a, a like specified point, um, I think it's most useful when exporting because what you can do is, yeah, so you see it says, is song start. So normally if I rendered this workspace, it would render everything here, all of this stuff included. Whereas now with the start block, it's only going to render from here forward because it considers that the song start. So I think that's the main utility of start blocks. Um, but they're also just, they can be kind of convenient for like, um, if you're working on, I need to turn this down. Um, I also just, I should probably just get rid of this, which would fix my issue. So with auto restart on, you can press space to start and stop and it will automatically bring the playhead back to that point, which is useful, but um, fairly straightforward. Um, the meta block is primarily for looping. However, you can also use it as a choke block. So Can enable choke here. So what this will do is it will um, it will mute the sounds above it for the length of that block. So you can see it's kind of casting this shadow. Oops, casting the shadow onto these blocks. So um, I'm not sure. You can just use that for like opening up a gap in something to, to let through something else or whatever like that. You can also make synth and sampler blocks into choke blocks. Um, what is it? I don't remember. Uh, maybe it's not on here. 
Uh, you can you can make there's some shortcut to make them into choke blocks so that you could for example Just like a little kick like this. Um, and then mm, I, let me see. It's in the manual somewhere. H, the H key. Oh yeah, there you go. So you can see this this sort of jagged pattern at the top lets you know that it's a a choke block or that it is choking um, so whoops so now if we bring these back in you can see it's casting that shadow so now it'll be playing this break and then it'll this will choke that out and play this sort of kick um, and you can do the same thing with samplers I believe H. Yep, there you go. See, it's choking that out as well. Um, I think the final thing to get into <coughs> after I eat a ravioli is sends and receives. So. This is a send block. So I'll put this under here. Sends and receives are another good example of something that just works very differently in Blockhead. Um, so then I'll make a receive bus. I'll connect it. So you can see the audio being sent out by this or the audio being received by this send block is being output by the connected receive bus now the thing that makes this very strange is you, you know normally in, in something like ableton and reaper you just have a track send to another track you might have some effects on that track, so you can have like a bunch of things all be um, affected by those effects together, and then that gets sent to the, the uh, master. Um, here, I, I think the sends and receives are more like a one-way portal system. You know, thinking like in the game Portal, that, you know, you make, you put two connected portals across the room or whatever. And when you look through one, you see out of the other. And it's kind of the same thing here. So even though, um, actually let's, so all this audio is back here, but it's being received by this receive bus. So we can still hear it here. Similarly, you can also 
put it behind. And even though it's the playhead hasn't gotten to the section yet, it's still you're still sort of viewing the audio through this portal. So the thing I find this most useful for is for looping. So obviously you can use a meta block for looping, but if you want to loop and do different things to each iteration of that loop, you can use sends and receives. So I can get this, I can um, put a saturator on it. Uh, I'm not sure why. Huh. That's strange. I'm not. It's. This is what comes up when you you have feedback between. Sends and receives. I'm not sure why it thinks there is. Uh oh. Uh oh. I haven't seen that one before. Well, let's see. Hopefully, I can <laughs> finish this before it crashes. Um, again, this is in alpha, so just be prepared for things to happen. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. That's that's strange. I'm not sure why it's thinking there's feedback here, but you know, you can. And then you could get some other effect. Like freeze, you put this here. And then you could get some other effect. Oh, it's not snapping either, that's odd. There we go. But basically, it's a way to loop something and sort of, not that it would be destructive otherwise, but it's sort of non-destructively where you aren't actually affecting the source audio at all. You're just kind of copying that, that portal to it and then putting it through different effects, which is pretty cool. The other thing you can do with it is create feedback loops. Um, now I believe this crashes, at least when I've been working with it in this version so far, it has crashed. However, it, um, didn't used to like it, it is able to do this. I think it's just having some, some problem in this version. Um, but if you put a send bus here. Let's see if it'll, let's see if it'll crash or not. Um, <clears throat> if you put a send bus here, then a receive bus above it and it's might be about to crash. You connect those. So, I should also probably turn this down some more because this tends to get loud. So, because the send is sending to this receive, which is then going back into the send, create feedback, and um, it doesn't break <laughs> if you make them start at the exact same time. Um, it's not going to be a zero delay, 100% feedback loop. But if you offset them, you can create you know, feedback delay. 
Um, also, kind of interestingly, so it, it sort of like fills in the block as you do this. So you see, like, normally, if these are, aren't overlapping at all, you just see the preview right away in in the receive block in the receive block um, but when they overlap it then switches to this crosshatch thing and basically you as it plays it sort of fills in the waveform um, and it this will also make it so you can looping over something repeatedly sort of builds on it especially if you like put this behind it you can see like each time you play through it it's adding more it's just a cool thing to play around with um and i think that's i think that's about i mean that's not about it. There's a lot more to Blockhead. A lot of intricacies and weird, unique, cool things. But I think that's a, a pretty good starting point and introduction to Blockhead. Which is what I wanted to make. So, definitely check it out. I will put links in the description. Highly, highly recommended. There's a great Discord community. Um... Yeah, it's it's awesome. Check it out. Uh, I think sort of in this vein of just doing like one-off videos about specific pieces of software, um, I think I'm going to do some about um, Giorgio San Cristoforo's software. Hopefully I said that correctly. Um, Giorgio San Cristoforo is an incredible software de developer. Um, which I, I believe I've mentioned some of his work before, specifically Bento. Uh, I, I feel like I might have shown this in a video at some point. Um, I discovered his software uh, around the time Ongaku came out. So I just saw his uh, tutorial video for Ongaku on YouTube. I was like, this looks really cool. I want to check it out. And so then I got it. His stuff is very affordable. It's like $20 for each of these. It's so incredibly worth it. Really, really cool stuff. Um, Bento is, is just like a, a noise noise machine. It's It's gnarly. Ongaku, I think, is similar to Bento in some ways, but it has more tonal, ambient capabilities. I haven't played around with Ongaku a ton yet. I, I really need to get to it. Um, but they're both really cool. And so I think they came out like a year and a half ago or something like that. Or I discovered them like a year and a half ago anyway. Um I think Ongaku came out in like May 2022 or something like that. So a little over a year and a half. Um, and so I, I just came to look at his website again recently and saw that he had created three more pieces of software since then. So um, I just bought Meal or Mele. Um, which is a thousand oscillator synth. So I want to I want to play around with that. I'm thinking I might get NoFi as well, which is like this tape looper. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool to make a track just with Bento, Ongaku, and Mil inside of NoFi, which would be cool. But yeah, we'll see. I think. I, I at least want to make videos about Bento and Ongaku at some point just to kind of show them off because they're really cool. Uh, I also, I need to make, 
continue my um, series on Watcha. So I only made one. I need to I need to continue that as well. I'm going to try to make videos more regularly. It's the difficulty for me is I am not a perfectionist, generally speaking. I do things very thoroughly, but I'm not I'm not a perfectionist. But I do find that I am a little bit of a perfectionist with videos in that I'll just restart them, restart them, restart them. I tried recording this video maybe 20 times. Maybe not, maybe not quite 20, maybe 15 times. And I spent probably like two hours trying to record this video. Not that this version's been perfect, obviously, because like I made my uh, ravioli in the middle of it, but uh, that's kind of my hang up with making videos. But I want to try to do them more regularly and also just like not be that bothered when something doesn't go exactly how I wanted or I misspeak slightly or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to try to make more videos more regularly. And I think for regarding Hollow City, I have maybe three or four more videos to do. I want to do a quick one on the fire synthesis because I think that that could even just be a good standalone video about fire synthesis um, or like kind of crackling fire synthesis. Uh, I want to do one for my signature sound, which is in the secret area. I want to do at least one for the music. I could see the music being more more than that because there's a lot in the music, at least relative to the size of the game. Um, and then I, I also want to make one for tweaking some stuff in Hollow City because I, I've been learning more in WISE recently, uh, particularly with spatial audio. And I'm not sure if I want to use spatial audio in it or not, because there aren't really any like rooms. The The only exception is the, um, you know, the room at the very end. But I learned about how to use the listener cone, finally. Uh, I don't know why it took me this long, but I also don't know why they didn't mention it in the in the tutorials. It's kind of surprising to me. But I yeah, I want to add that in to um, apply some attenuation and filtering to sources when you're facing away from them. So yeah, I'll make a make an like make an updating Hollow City video after those other ones. I think so. Hopefully. I will be doing these more regularly and be able to get through all that. But thank you for watching. Um, definitely check out Blockhead. Definitely, definitely. It's it's remarkable. If if you do sound design, break core, uh, any sort of experimental anything, definitely check it out. So thanks for watching.